the science behind insect reproduction a closer look reproduction and development in insects nearly all insects reproduce by sexual reproduction this involves the formation and fusion of gametes sperm from the test and eggs from the ovaries there are some species in insects that can also reproduce asexually they do this by a process called parthenogenesis what does parthenogenesis allows insects to do during parthenogenesis a female eggs can produce a new organism without being fertilized by sperm this usually requires that the female can produce eggs that have two copies of each chromosome diploid instead of the one copy that an egg normally contains haploid parthenogenesis generates an exact clone of the female there are several other forms of parthenogenesis found in some insect species what kind of mechanism does the female use to control the gender of offspring one of them is extremely interesting because it allows the female to choose whether she will produce male or female offspring in this species including some ants bees and wasps females are diploid and are the result of sexual reproduction fusion of eggs and sperm whereas males are haploid and are the result of parthenogenesis the female produces haploid eggs and she can choose whether or not to fertilize them with sperm obtained from the male and stored in her body if she fertilizes the eggs by allowing them to fuse with sperm they will become diploid and produce female progeny if she chooses not to fertilize the eggs they will still develop but they will be they will produce haploid male progeny unlike aquatic organisms that can release their sperm into the open ocean where they will swim to the eggs in the female body most insects have to either deliver sperm directly or indirectly into the female's body for external fertilization there are some species that package their sperm into sealed pouches that they leave on the ground for females to find the females then use the packaged sperm to fertilize their eggs why is this form of fertilization less efficient this is less efficient than directly delivering sperm into the females body by population and it runs the risk of the pouch not be being found metamorphosis many of the invertebrates that we have explained so far go through one or more larval stages during their development from an embryo to an adult this larval stages are often very different in form from the adult animal this is called indirect development and it differs from the direct development in which the young organisms hatch resembling smaller version of the adult what is metamorphosis this process of developing from a larva to the recognizable adult form is called metamorphosis most insects grow through some form of metamorphosis in some insect species the transition to adulthood involves relatively minor changes but in the majority of species it is a drastic and profound transformation which insects undergo metamorphosis which do not insects that do not undergo a metamorphosis change during their development are called ametabolous insects this includes members of the aptia gota sub class and paleopetra infra class the only change that this species undergo is a increase in size and then maturing to sexual organs among insects that experience metamorphosis there are two types hemimetabolic and holometabolic describe the difference between hemimetabolous insects and holometabolous insects hemimetabolous insects such as cockroaches grasshoppers and dragonflies go through gradual changes as they slowly develop from juvenile form called nymphs to the adult form these changes often include the budding and growth of their wings 
the overall forms of the nymphs and the adults are not drastically different from each other. The most of the body parts are the same between the two. The stages of development of hemimetabolous insects, the grasshoppers are shown in figure below. A grasshopper undergo hemimetabolous development. Notice that the overall features do not drastically change during the grasshopper's development from a nymph to an adult. But wings being to emerge and develop during this process and the grasshopper increase in size. Holometabolous insects are another story altogether. Think of the difference between a maggot and a fly. The larval stage are distinctly different from the adult stage. Insect larvae are focused on two main activities, eating and growing. At the end of the larva stage, they still do not have any obvious adult features. They then enter a transition stage called pupa, plural pupae. Pupa are immobile and sometimes they are encased in a cocoon made of silk or a hard shell. During the pupal stage, the tissue and appendages of the larval stage are broken down and recognized into new adult tissues, organs and limbs. Figure below shows an insect at various stages during the pupal stage. The mature adults emerge from the pupal stage able to move and reproduce, looking nothing like the preceding larva stage. As with molting, this process is controlled by hormones that trigger the drastic internal changes needed to undergo metamorphosis. A honey bee shown in different phases of the pupal stage notice the progressive formation of the adult limbs and body regions as the pupa develops. How is this complex process of metamorphosis advantages to the animal? One ad advantage is that it allows them to divide certain functions between different stages of the life cycle. In some species, the ex extensive feeding and energy storage of the larval stage is adequate to last the lifetime of the insect. The main benefit of the process is that these stages in the life cycle can adapt in ad independently of each other. Evolutionary changes can occur that modify the larval stage to improve feeding and nutrient and uptake, for example, without affecting the adult stage and the vice versa. Not all aspects of the organism's form and function are affected by changes that are compartmentalized in this way. Let's take a specific example. The mouth parts of a larva can be modified to adapt to a different type of food sources that has become more available. This change will not affect the mouth parts or head appendages of the adult form, allowing them to adapt in independently for other functions such as sensory perception. Despite the type or absence of metamorphosis during the development, all insects periodically shed their skeleton, exoskeleton throughout the process of molting that you learned about the previous lessons of the chapter. Molting is a type of behavior that is carried out by the insects. This might be considered a fairly simple behavior, particularly if you compare it to building a pyramid or competing in a chess tournament. However, even insects are capable to some fairly complex behaviors on interactions with their environment. This will be the topics of the next concept. Summary of what we have learned from this topic. Nearly all insects reproduce by sexual reproduction. In some insect species, the female can choose to produce male or female offspring. Insects that do not undergo a metamorphic change during their development are called emetabolous insects. Among insects that experience metamorphosis, there are two types, hemimetabolic and holometabolic. Insect larvae are focused on two main activities, eating and growing. During the pupal stage, 
the tissues and the appendages of the larval stage are broken down and recognized into new adult tissues organs and limbs that is all thanks for staying with us like this video and don't forget to subscribe